Hello, um, my name is Karen Helene Rudman. I'm the curator at the Art Center Highland Park. Today, I am going to be talking with three amazing artists, Sheila Elias, mom, um, who is in Miami, Florida, Joshua Elias, son and brother, who's in Los Angeles, and Joyce Elias, daughter and sister, who is in Evanston, Illinois. So usually I would not label you each with those pronouns when I make an introduction for an artist, but in the context of this exhibit that is happening at the Art Center opening next Friday on the 17th of June, um, in that context, it's kind of important to have those pronouns, right? Because this family, and I'm gonna say a, a capital E, is exhibiting for the first time at the Art Center Highland Park and we're thrilled to be exhibiting your work together. Um, and on top of the um, exhibition in the main gallery, Family, the trio worked as our guest jurors and featured artists for an adjunct exhibit called Nature Versus Nurture. Inspired by their kind of collaboration and exhibition for sure, um, I just wanted to mention on a side note that when we originally met a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, because this exhibit was postponed two times, we really had talked about having a family dinner. And in that family dinner, we would have our artists talk and we would sit around and talk art and talk, talk about what we're gonna be talking about today. But unfortunately, because of, post, because of COVID and all of the stipulations and regulations, um, we're gonna have to do this on Zoom. So thank God we can do it on Zoom. And welcome Sheila, Joshua, and Joyce. So I wanna start by sharing some of your work and letting each of you talk about your work in your own words and maybe mention how you became an artist. So I'm gonna share my screen. Just give me one second. There we go. Okay, so we're starting with Sheila's work. So Sheila, do you want to say a couple words about your work and how you became an artist? Oh, well, this particular piece is not um, very current, but it is a very uh, important piece because I feel like it's based on why I became an artist. It's based kind of on Matisse's Le Cirque. It's called Dream I Had While Awake. And um, um, it, when I was, um, and I think it was eight years old, my mother took me to the Art Institute of Chicago and I saw a Matisse painting. I actually feel like my heart stopped. I was so excited to see it. And I told my mother I wanted to go to the museum every day and uh, leave school. My mother wouldn't let me at eight years old. She was very strict that way. She said, you can come every Saturday and all summers. And that's when I knew I had never met an artist. Although my mother was an interior designer, my grandmother was a dress designer and my grandfather made uh, men's suits. So there was an artistic bent in the family and I was always encouraged to do paintings and drawings and then by the time I was in school, I was, that was my passion. And um, I do feel that there is definitely some nature versus nurture. This piece is very current. It was uh, done Lake Como, I think 2018, I think right before, I, I keep saying BC, before Como, uh, before uh, COVID. <laughs> um, uh, this, this piece was an altar piece at a deconsecrated church turned into a museum. A Swiss curator uh, curated an exhibition from artists all over the world that was called Interference. It was based on technology interfering with our lives. And the centerpieces on this are done on the iPad. And I was kind of known for the iPad pieces prior to this exhibition. And so there was, I think, I don't know, six men from all over the world and myself, uh, only American, only woman in the exhibition. 10,000 people came to see this show. Wow. Okay, Josh. 
Hi, how are you? Good morning, Good all. Uh, well, okay. First of all, this work is called Ancient in Valley. And um, um, some years ago, I did quite a few sweat lodges out here in Los Angeles. Uh, sweat Lodge is a Native American ceremony. And in it, uh, uh, there's usually about 10, 15 people. And um, within the ceremony, it gets quite hot. And there's uh, four rounds, they call them. And it's interesting enough, what they do is they call the ancestors in all the time. So it's an ancestral call. As far as how, uh, when I decide to become an artist, um, I, I can't, uh, I can't be sure of that, to be honest. Um, but I would say that uh, uh, once when uh, we were in Union Pier, Michigan, when I was a boy, um, I found a rock at the beach. Uh, and and uh, Union Pier and Lake Michigan, for those, I guess those who do know, you know, there's no salt in the water, but this rock floated in the water. And it was very curious to me. And I picked up the rock and I was like, you know, I, I think I was a, a astronaut at the time. So I started questioning things and that's what an artist does. And it's a, I started questioning, where did this come from? It was very porous. I hung on to it. It was in my room for 20 years or so, you know, until I left. <laughs> and um, and uh, so that's kind of um, a little bit of how I came in. The second piece is called Elpis, which is based on hope. And uh, very simply, it's from um, a story, a Greek mythology, which is not simple, but about hope and what's left amongst a box full of not such good things. Uh, Hermes threw that into the box, Pandora's box, as a, as a little gift to humans to allow hope be surrounded by a lot of hopelessness. So, um, and I did that at the beginning of the pandemic, that painting. So, there you go. Okay. Joyce? Um, the, I started a series of uh, collages about a year or so ago, um, a new series of them. I've always done collage, but it's a new series. And I started painting a uh, very thick watercolor paper. So I just put out sheets on my art table and just paint away, mix up colors and cut them out and make collages. And I was also thinking of, there's a thread between all of us, Matisse used to do this um, back in the day, but, um, he probably didn't use acrylic paints. I use acrylic paints. Um, this one's called Avocado. And um, a lot of these are nature inspired. So that's, that's where I start, start with this. Um, I don't pre-plan them. This one's called Garden. And I just kind of work with the colors. You know, I just pair up all these colors and start cutting away. So that's, that's and when I did and then when the, did you become an artist? Like, how did you become an artist? I think I always was an artist. Um, I was always making things and building things, and I don't know. I would like organize my neighbor kids, and we do plays, and I was like into like costumes, and I don't know. I just always did it. I didn't really think about it. I just made this made stuff. So <laughs> I think forever. Yeah. Okay, so here I'm going to stop sharing so we can see each other when we start our conversation. So, so now that we've kind of seen your work next to each, each other in a virtual kind of way, you know, you can see there's similarities there, right? Like there's a similarity in coloration and form. Do you guys see the similarities? Like I see them, it seems so obvious for me, but do you see them? Or do you see like, oh no, our work is completely different. Sheila, I'll start with you. I, I see I see them because they're, they're, in my opinion, they're both very beautiful colorists and color is my passion. And I actually have a more difficult time with form than color. Color is, easy and delicious for me. Form is a little more problematic, although I've always kind of, not kind of, but I always loved the figure. And um, even though I did a lot of abstract paintings at one time, 
uh, I had an amazing teacher who actually was from the Art Institute of Chicago from the Bauhaus School named Paul Wiegart. And he was very influential. And um, he, of course, adored Matisse also, but he had escaped from Germany, he and his wife, Nellie Barr. They were very well known at the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, and um, uh, I, we used to sit there and paint for hours, just color, color. I always like to do a figurative imagery with abstract coloration. But as far as the children, uh, Joyce, as I, uh, Josh said, was really working as an artist before Josh was. He, it wasn't that he wasn't working as an artist. He was just doing other things. He did acting for a while and, and a few other things. But uh, Joyce, when she was little, would do like these weavings. And I said, I think this kid was from Africa. I don't even know how to do what she's doing. <laughs> and I, she would do these weavings and I really didn't know how to do them. I still, some of the things, you know, that she did, I didn't understand. And Josh too, he does things that I, I find um, mysterious in a way, even though they're your children, they grow in different directions, which is very healthy as far as I'm concerned. But I never promoted them to be artists, although their father said I over museum the kids. He made that. <laughs> <in my hands>. <laughs> okay, so that that takes me to the bigger question. Is it nature or is it nurture? So were you were your kids born through generational? It's interesting, Josh, that you went to this ancestral kind of bringing the ancestors forward. And right. Sheila mentioned the long line of maybe not art for art's sake, but definitely right. creative right. industries. So are you born with that? Is that something that's a characteristic that we're born with on that side of the brain? Or is it that your mom was this kick-ass artist who was like doing these installations and she's taking oh, yeah. you to museums and she's exposing you to this whole world that some kids never have the opportunity to see. So what so I'm gonna start because Josh is like chomping at the bit to go and then no, I'm gonna get Joyce just, an opportunity. So Josh, what, what do you think? think? I'm just taking in what you're saying. I'm nodding. Yeah. I'm, well, it's it's a tricky one because uh, first of all, mom exposed us to and, and all, and we didn't think it unnatural. That was like, although we know other kids in our blood, they weren't like going to museums every every other week as much. I don't think, and 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 going to art fairs and doing just interesting meeting people that are making flying objects when you're like eight or nine, you know, you know, out of, out of wire. And it's like, you know, at the, whatever, you know, art fairs and stuff down in um, old town as an example. Um, but, but I think that, um, I think we all have our, our strong personalities and I think we all um, have been exposed. I, I really think that we kind of, mom is a, a force and I think we gravitated towards that and were exposed to things and then she didn't dictate what we had to do with it and Joyce just had this artistic thing going on long out a curious in my own way to everyone and communicate with what they'll do and so um, so yeah just like questioning things so I think it's I think it's um a combination of nature and nurture is my mm -hmm. is uh, the zoom is kind of cutting in and out I yeah it's okay. cutting in and out a little maybe yeah. oh, uh, i'm so sorry I about that i think that um everybody is creative like born creative and the creativity comes out in different ways in people and oftentimes and i blame this on the school system uh kids just get their creativity just squashed, you know, they're just not allowed to do things that would be nat come naturally to a child, you know, per, you know, imagining things and making stuff and not really worried about it being like really good art, but just making things. And um, so I think it's always there, but I don't think every, you know, obviously not everybody uses it or they use it in different ways. They become different kinds of professionals and it, that is creative too, can be creative too. 
So. Yeah, I agree. I When I teach art or when I did teach art before I was curating, I always taught creative process and, and talked about that we all have creative energy. It's just how we how we express it and um, and how it's nurtured. You're right. We grew up in that generation of like art teachers who said this is the wrong way of doing it and this is the right way of doing it. And so for a lot of kids that just went, oh, I'm out because I don't I can't draw the tree to look like the tree. So I'm not an artist. And yeah. But if yeah. you have a parent who's nurturing creative process, who's saying, wow, look at my son pick up a rock and see something in it and know that that's being an artist. It has nothing to do with the output of what you're making, but it's a, it's a mindset and it's a philosophy and it's a way of living. I think that is the exposure that you were given and the nurturing to know that this is a career choice and this can be something you do the rest of your life. And, and that's, a, you know, that's rewarding. And it's also probably allowed you to have the self-esteem and to have the courage and, and the strength to, to do it because, you know, there's a lot of rejection as an artist. There's a lot of that go, goes behind it that is really hard. So when you have that parent who's saying, yeah, it's okay, you can do this. I mean, it's really something. And I think it's, it's unique and it's special. And I think it's been a pleasure for me to watch. Like, it's funny as a curator, you don't usually get to watch somebody's family dynamics but I've gotten this like catbird seat, like, but what's amazing is how much you all uh, support each other in your, in your artwork. And you all like, you know, there've been times where Joyce will show something new and Joss is like, wow, I didn't see that yet. That's so great. And Sheila, you know, cavells and talks about her kids and is so proud. And so those are such, important parts of being an artist so at, you have this audience like built in that gets it that gets what you do and and you also have like that person to go mm, I don't know if that's working like can you push that or I just think that's so fascinating yeah like how do you feel that that's helped or changed your work like do you influence each other who wants to take that one well, I was just going to say one of the things I'm really proud of with both of them, and I really have never been one of these mothers that has pictures of my children or pictures of my children's art. I do on occasion show some things, but I'm, I'm not a braggadocia about them, but they, I am very proud to say, do not appear to have sibling rivalry, which I think is a really rough thing in a lot of families. They are very encouraging to each other and they talk on the phone. And I always say the minute Josh opens his mouth, Joyce falls on the floor laughing. She adores him and has always <laughs> adored him. And so that, that healthy attitude is very important to me. Actually, almost more important than their art, that they adore each other and that they are creative and support each other. That to me is terrific. And that's just... Yeah, I think I think if I can pick up on that, I th also think a sense of play and a sense of humor is what we all share. Yeah, and and that is actually vital as an artist and as a person. <laughs> but really, um, it's it's vital and it's supportive in a different kind of way than um, than one can imagine. Um, and because there's a lot of unknowns in life, but there's also a lot of unknowns as an artist. And if you have a sense of humor about it, you can, you can move forward. You can maybe find some solutions or create some things that, you know, it wasn't in your field and we support each other that way, I think. So, yeah. Mm. So this is kind of a funny aside. So, the, the during process was very interesting because, <laughs> you know, as much as your work has similarities, you know, like your work, I could, I could piece together like similarities. The work that you selected for nature versus nurture was very different. So, you know, in the past, when I've had three jurors, there's usually, you know, maybe 10 pieces that get 
you know, the highest marks across the board. And then those are, um, those are, you know, you just kind of know, or because the way we structure it for those of you who don't know is that the jurors give their favorite pieces a five and the fives get in automatically. I don't think there were any fives across the board. So there were many pieces that like Josh gave a five and Joyce did not, and then vice versa. But I found that so interesting because as much as your work can be similar, you're each individuals and you each have your own sensibility and, and you look at the whole theme of nature versus nurture a little different. And so I love that too, because that's, we all want to be individuals. You're not one person. You're not an offshoot of your mom. You're not, an, you're not a symbiotic one. So like this exhibit is such a perfect microcosm for the conversation because your work, each of you stand on your own as established phenomenal artists, yet you have this connection and separation that weaves throughout. And I think even as jurors, you could see that. And so even as the audience walks through nature versus nurture, you're gonna see those subtle similarities and differences weave through the exhibit. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see it all come together next week. So, I am so. very curious about the whole jurying process. Um, I'm new to it in this kind of, for this kind of um, venue. And um, I really enjoyed it though. I really liked it very much. And I really spent time like thinking how would this all look together? But, mm -hmm. you know, unaware of what Josh and my mom were, were choosing. So I also- Well, the funny thing was Sheila kind of, she overlapped both. So that oh, oh really? it, it just was interesting. The two offspring yeah. kind of picked different and then the mom was overlapping with, but it was like, she was not picking favorites and she uh, didn't even know. <laughs> uh, obviously it's funny because people that, that, that don't know that you're, we did not, we didn't consult each other at all. on this process. No. So they're clear on at all. So that's really interesting to hear that. It's the first time we're hearing it as well. Oh, I, it was a very interesting process because I was going through them and you know, I would see one at a time and go, hey, it, it was just a very interesting process and and kind of helped me, you know, I'm asking these same questions through this exhibit, is it nature versus nurture? And somewhere in between, and you know, the studies probably say it's a combination of both. Um but I do think um, either way, the connections are strong, are stronger than the differences. You know, there's something about, and there's something about how you interact together that's really powerful and really unique and special. And it's probably because you do have this common interest, this common, these common like vocabulary you know, where some people, they don't have a parent they can talk to about their artwork or, or what they're feeling or, you know, any of these things that we're talking about today. So what a gift, you know, that yeah. you have a built-in audience and a built-in kind of um, community of artists right off the start. Mm -hmm. And um I think that this exhibit is gonna be very powerful. So just to give a little plug that, um, please come to the opening Friday, the 17th from 5.30 to eight at the Art Center in Highland Park. Um, and again, Sheila Elias, Joshua Elias and Joyce Elias are our featured artists and Nature Versus Nurture will be kind of explored and it should be a, an exciting, wonderful exhibit and I think a great way to kick off the summer. Um, and I do want to mention that we expanded the definition of nature versus nurture to how we take care of our, our, our world, our natural world and our relationship to the natural world. Because I think it, it really is the same, you know, how your mom nurtured you is the same of how we need to nurture our world in a bigger sense. And so, um, I think that was an aspect that makes the discu discussion a little broader and a little bigger. Um, I think the workshops will be kind of interesting too. 
Yes, thank you for reminding me to mention. Yeah. Tell me what each of you talk about your workshops for a second, just so people can hear about them. Josh, talk first because you're the first. Sure. One. sure. <laughs> um, I mean, my workshop, uh, it's about an hour and a half workshop. We're going to have fun. It's going to be very active. In other words, we're going to be painting throughout. Uh, it's not going to be a lecture and then someone can do what they want to do. Um, I'll, I'll work on color, uh, some basic ideas of color application and line and um, uh, the combination of, uh, of how to make certain colors and half tones and things and a way of um, you can make colors do different things by different ways of, you know, of applying them and what materials and substrates you're applying them on. So I think it's going to be fun too, actually. And, and so um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. And I'm second, and I'm going to do a very brief workshop. I'm going to, um, uh, I have a thumb drive that I'm going to put in and uh, do a PowerPoint, which is going to just talk about, I think it's 12 or maybe 14 installations I've done over the years, which were at the time uh, considered unique. And uh, the, I'm going to just talk about those things. Um, I'm not um, going to work with anybody, just um, ex exhibit the uh, images and talk about how I came to do those particular installations. Great. And Joyce? Um, mine is a collage workshop and very hands-on and hopefully very fun. I, cause I have so much fun doing this. <laughs> so I hope that will, that will come through. Um, I called it an homage to Matisse, Henri Matisse. And so I'm going to show a little bit, I think most people have seen his work, but just like a little inspiration, you know, for it. We're not doing the work exactly like Matisse. This is, everybody's going to do their own thing. And I'm going to talk about different papers and how to um, adhere them and some cutting techniques. So that's the plan. Great. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be there. And um, so I'm just looking forward to meeting and seeing you all in person again. And um, we were, this is going to be such a unique and exciting exhibit. So we can't wait and um, safe, safe travels for. Sheila and Josh, and we'll be seeing you on Tuesday. Great. Great. All right. Thank Looking you. Forward. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Karen.